Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Tech Tips Live. It is a beautiful Thursday afternoon here in Goshen, Indiana. I have on the call with me today Chris and Jackson, who will be helping helping me out. And we've got about 20 attendees today, a fantastic gathering. So uh, we're going to have a lot to cover and a lot to learn here in the next half hour. As we go through today, if you have questions, you can click on your q a it should be in the upper right hand corner and send your questions to me the host and we will try and work those in or we'll also answer some as we get to the end we will be posting a recording here in a couple days early next week we have that on our website and also on the hertzler uh, youtube channel so the whole history of tech tips live is on the hertzler youtube channel just so you remember that if there's ever things you want to go back and dig into and, and see some of the other TTLs we've had, you can go there. And we also appreciate your feedback and future topics. We are currently planning for the second half of the year, and we'll take July off, and then we will go into August through the end of the year. So I would welcome any suggestions you all have. We can put together. i uh, love to have some guests. If any of you would like to join us and uh, give some input, that would be fantastic. So we will get moving here. Like I said here, I've got uh, Jackson and Chris on the call with me and they will be presenting. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on introduction. You know, we continue to be working remotely. We've gotten things worked out with telecommunications, got our phones remote and all that now. So I think it's working pretty well. However, as always, you, you want to get to us quick. It's support or sales or accounting. Those, uh, those get to the right people as quickly as possible. I've been showing this image a couple of times on our last couple of Tech Tips Live because we are working on our platform and Python and inspections is an important part of that platform. It is what enables us to push into new territories in terms of connectivity with enterprise software, with machines, with other databases, with dashboards, all those things. Python, although not mentioned on this slide, is a part of what holds this all together and keeps it going. And so today's session is a pretty important one. And I think I can envision in the future this fall, We'll have more discussions of Python as, uh, and, and drill into some things uh, in more detail even so that all of you can continue to leverage Gainseeker and leverage it as that powerful platform that you have. All right, I am gonna get out of the way now and Chris, I think you're up first. So go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. I was gonna be talking about a few things uh, about uh, Python and uh, not only why, but how to use it. <clears throat> One of the nice things about us having switched from our old proprietary uh, template language to Python is that Python is a very powerful, easy to learn open source programming language. Um, and what's really nice is the fact that it hey, there's extensive online support and resources. To be honest, a lot of times if I need to know how to do something in Python I've never done before, I just Google Python and then whatever it is I'm trying to do. Uh, if I can't remember the syntax or something, Python and, and say, how to like split a string into different pieces. And I'll have all kinds of resources online that will tell me exactly how to do what I want to do. Um, terminology here, what we use Python, when we use Python, we're using to create scripts. Mostly we use them to create inspection scripts. Those are scripts that are run during data entry. One of the nice things about the new inspection platform is that the scripts are stored independently from the inspections, unlike the older templates. So you can write a script and then use it in lots of different templates or inspections, excuse me, or you can actually use the same script multiple places in the inspections. This allows you to create those general purpose scripts. And then if you need to change them, you need to change them in one place as opposed to multiple places. This is a, a significant work multiplier that lets you get more done in less time. Now that's just all general information. 
um, other places where we're using Python is doing dashboard retrievals or dashboard components. A dashboard retrieval allows you to script something that you can use to put in, put together custom retrievals. Um, I've actually written a, a retrieval for someone that took information from two different data records and combined them into one uh, to allow them to do a different type of analysis. Python dashboard components can do something if you need specifically uh, something that we doesn't ex ex natively exist in the dashboard module. Um, the external data retrievals can be used to go out to non gain seeker data sources um, and pull data in and format it as gain seeker re records without even storing the data into gain seeker. And uh, last but not least is you can cr now create custom statistics using Python which is a major advantage to me. I've done this a number of times for various customers. One of the things I wanna talk about today is what we call an inspection script. Now, an inspection script is a script that you define at the inspection level. You could think of this as simply a pre-script for the inspection as opposed to a sub-inspection. This script, uh, will be run before any other scripts. It doesn't actually technically behind the scenes get run as soon as you open up the inspection, but you could think of it that way. Before any other script gets executed, the in inspection script will be run. Now, what I use, often use this for is to define variables, define um, text strings or functions. Bill, can you advance to the next slide? Okay, so you know I'll use uh, functions, which again is just little pieces of code that do something, and then I can call upon those functions at any time. And one of the things that I've started to do with some of our customers is maybe create a single inspection script that has a library of functions, and then every inspection might actually have this inspection script defined. So whenever you want to use a function, you just uh, have that inspection script, define it at the beginning of the inspection, and it's you're good to go. And again, that gives you one place where you can put that code and edit the code that is then used anywhere in your system. Now, to talk about a couple examples here, and uh, Bill, can you make me the presenter so I can go ahead and display my screen, please? All right, you should be good to go, Chris. Okay, this is a small inspection that I put together for you guys. Um, I'm gonna talk about how you can set the inspection script, which basically is in the properties of the inspection. So it should automatically default to these properties when you first open the inspection. But if you've gone in here and you've clicked anywhere off, you can get back simply by clicking the inspection name in the upper left-hand corner. This is where you define the inspection script. And I've got one in here where I've got two different functions that I'm using in what we call validation. Validating traceability information to make sure the operator didn't in, uh, inadvertently enter incorrect values is something that I get asked to do a lot at, for customers. So I've got a couple functions here that are gonna basically take a value and then return a true or false based upon whether that string, because all traceability values are entered as a string, is um, a valid integer string or a string of integers, of numbers, if you will, or if it's a valid float. One of the ways that you could use this is if you have a work order number. And the work order number technically is numeric, but when you enter it into a gain seeker trace field, it's going to be entered and stored as a string. But if it's not numeric, then you'd know that it's not a valid value. The other thing that I've got here is I'm defining a variable. This is a, uh, a variable that is gonna do a select, uh, a select statement to retrieve the most recent X values for a particular trace field. You can then, um, you can then use this to define a drop-down list. This is another example that I got from a customer, to be honest. It was not my idea to come up with this. 
but the customer had a lengthy trace value for a work order number that is always numeric, but it was like 10 or 12 digits long. And they would have to enter this um, every single time that they went in to enter data. And she thought it would be nice if the value, they could type in a value, but they could also have a drop down list that would show the last three, five, eight, however many values that had been previously entered in the system, and then they could just choose it from the list. But because work orders changed every single day, this wasn't something that you could manage a full regular drop down list and then force people to choose it from the list. So this is a query here that allows you to go and select the top many UDL1, trace field one, um, from the table where um, ordering by date time descending. Now in this one inspection, basically they're entering a lot number, they're entering a length and a width, and then I'm just calculating an area. As I said, this is a very basic inspection. Now, one of the techniques that uh, another one of my, co my coworkers introduced me to is instead of having multiple scripts and then having to like switch back and forth to see all your code, they're, he's putting all of his code basically into one inspection script. And then if it's a pre-script, he has to have a, a, a pre-script defined, but both his pre-script and the on-chain script are running at the same time. And if he needed a post-script, he could do the same thing. He'd have to have three formula tests, one to run it at pre, one to run it on change, and then one to run it on post. But then in the script, he basically just says, if the test ID equals pre, which is what it will be, be when it's running as a pre-script, do this code, which is defining that dropdown list. And then this is all the on change code that's being based upon what was the test that just got changed. And then if they needed to, he could say if test ID equals post and put the code in the post script. So instead of having to have two or three different scripts, he puts it all in one place so you can easily, it's easier for him to edit and maintain. Chris, may I hop in here? I had a question uh, already here about debugging, and I don't know if you want to touch on it here, or maybe you and Jax can, can hit that at the end, but you want to, I don't know if there's something you could just uh, show real quickly here about how you think about debugging when you're working on a script like this. Well, one of the nice things about debugging, though most of you are probably very already familiar with this, are breakpoints. I can put a breakpoint in here and at various places in here, okay? And then when I run the script or I run the inspection, this screen will appear when I'm running through the, the script and it will stop every time there's a breakpoint. This is another advantage of when you put all the uh, code into one script is you have all this script, you can put breakpoints in that will be triggered when the script was started to run in as a pre-script or a post-script or an on-chain script. If you have it in three different spec in three different scripts, that becomes a little bit tougher. Obviously, one and another thing I can do, and this is a very nice thing that they've added, is if I just click this button, it actually goes out and starts the inspection. So I can actually step through it, but also have my code here behind. So now this is running as a pre-script, so I can step through it. And over here on the right hand side. There are all my variables, of course. These two were function or defined in my inspection script, and they're the functions, the, the code that will to return a, a valid, whether or not the, a variable I pass in is either a valid float or a valid integer. And then here is um, the string that I defined in a variable also in that inspection script. So I can either scroll through so if you see, take a look here, this is showing me the last five most recent distinct values that were entered in UDL1. It was done by running a query and I built that query. I built that query by, in this, in this cell, I passed in the five saying, I want the five most recent values and I'm passing in the, uh, the UDL as well. 
So because I, I didn't do this quite right, I should have had this as a number I could pass in as well, so I could grab any UDL that I wanted. In any case, this allows me to step through it. So if in this case, the length needs to be a valid float. So if I like put in something that's not acceptable, it's not a number, See, it's popping up this message. Okay, I should have scraped, I should have stepped through that code, but then it cleared that value and actually put the focus back in that. Let me go ahead and put this in another breakpoint, and I'll execute that again. So my test ID, because the the, val the field that I just changed was had a test ID of length. So at this point in time, it's going to execute this code. I'm grabbing the value from this inspection, and then I'm calling the function and passing in whatever value I got. Now what it did there is it actually went off and, and executed the code that was in this valid float function and because it returned a false it's, it's popping up the message to let the user know what they did wrong it's clearing the field and it's resetting the focus excellent All so right. now i can actually put in a valid uh, a good value oh and i can also by the way when I no longer feel like I need them, I can take out these breakpoints. Okay, so nothing very terribly complex in this inspection, but it gives you an idea of, of one, how you can define functions or reusable strings. The dot format command in Python is a very useful command. You can define a base string and then build all the variations of it that you need by passing in parameters. I use make a lot of use of that function. And you can, as I said, you can do, use this, set, set all these functions and strings up in an inspection level script, and then use them easily in multiple inspections. Back to you, Phil. Okay, fantastic. And let me... See, you want to make me presenter again, Chris? Or you could actually pass it to Jackson. So Jackson, if you want to get ready, I don't know if there's any, there you go. Chris has passed it over to you. Okay. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, we've got, well, it hasn't been shared yet. Okay. There, we're getting you. Okay. Okay, uh, so I'm going to cover some of the up and coming Python improvements and new additions in gain sticker versions 9.3.2 and 9.4. <clears throat> and after that, if I have time, I'll do a quick rundown of some of the features of the Python editor that you might not know about. So uh, uh, one of the big additions to version 9.3.2 that we added was the ability to archive Python scripts. And this is super useful. I know a lot of people are excited about it and I've already found it super useful. Um, this is useful because it allows you to keep track of previous versions of scripts and then easily see the changes that have been made to them. So I have this script up. Um, I've added another very important comment to it, um, and I want to save those changes uh, and, and archive them. So in the Python editor, we've added this new archive button, and by clicking on the archive button, it allows you to archive the current version of uh, your script and also view the previous versions um, that have been archived for this script. So you can see here, I have the current script. The current script is um, highlighted, so that's the one that we're viewing. But then by clicking on these other archives, I can see what 
how this the script was stored at that point at that point in time. So the very first archive, and then um, all the subsequent ones. Um, <clears throat> I've, and so you can see here's my current script, the previous script. I have made a change, so I'm going to go ahead and um, archive it. Um, click on the archive current script button, and then it asks for an archive message. So each archive is uh, <clears throat> is stored with the date that um, that it was archived, the date and time, the the version, archive version, that just increments every time you archive it. An archive message, which is really handy, um, which, which allows you to store relevant information about the changes that have been made, and then who archived the script. Um, so I'll answer, I'll uh, enter a quick archive message. Um, let's see, added important comments. And then save this archive and then you can see it shows up here. Um, another thing, another handy thing you can do um, is if you use shift or control and, and click another script, you can compare um, the current script with previous archives or just compare archives. Um, and so for example, from the initial archive to this, uh, this archive, um, I made quite a few changes. So, um, <clears throat> And this uses your the, the compare that's been set up your default your default settings. Um, I have mine using WinMerge, which is free to download. Um, and you can see, okay, yeah, this is these are the changes that I that I made. Um, you can also see the archive message for um, the currently selected archive uh, down below. Um, another thing we we also added the ability to archive all of the scripts for an inspection. So if you have an inspection that uses a lot of different scripts, instead of archiving them all individually, you can go to the manage arc in the manage inspection dialog, um, highlight that inspection and click archive scripts. And um, and and uh, all the scripts for that inspection will be archived. Um, the same thing has been added for dashboards. You can archive all the scripts for a dashboard in GS charts and also in GS utility, um, <clears throat> you can, archive all of your all of your scripts. Um, so you can do it by script type because there are different script types or you can do all of them at once. And that um, that's useful if you want to make an initial backup of all your scripts um, or if you want to make a bunch of changes at once and don't want to go archive all of those scripts individually. Uh, another really useful feature that's that's coming in 9.4, um, we added the ability to add bookmarks um, to, to scripts and navigate through them in the Python editor. And so uh, if you have your cursor on a line, if you have a script open and the cursor's on a line, you can press Control K to set a breakpoint, or sorry, not a breakpoint, a bookmark. <laughs> it's easy to get them confused. Um, a bookmark on that line. And you can also do the same thing if you right click and choose toggle bookmark. Um, so let me set another one here. Uh, then once you have bookmarks set, um, you can either right click and choose next bookmark or previous bookmark to navigate to those bookmarks, or you can also use the keyboard shortcuts, which are control N and control P. Um, so I'm hitting control N. And then if I wanna go to the bookmark uh, that I set at the top of the script, I hit control N again, and then, um, it, the script gets navigated to there. You can also do this between scripts. So, for example, if I wanted to set a bookmark in this script as well, um, and then it, when you're navigating to that one, it, the editor will switch scripts. Um, and a pro tip from, from Byron, the, uh, the alpha geek himself, um, is that if you are navigating through a bunch of scripts, um, you can set just to set bookmarks in them and then collapse the script list tab so you have more screen real estate and you don't have to keep that tab open to keep um, switching between scripts. Um, I think, wait, I'm, let me see. Uh, let me just highlight one more addition and, and then I'll hand it back to you, Phil. I know we're running out of time a little bit here. Um, another thing that we added in uh, nine four is the ability to copy scripts from one config configuration to another. 
Um, and so that would be useful um, in a situation where you maybe have a separate development and production configurations and you're constantly, you know, making changes in your development configuration and then testing them, making sure they're okay, and then moving that over to your production configuration. Um, <clears throat> if you're doing that, um, we added this copy to configuration button, which allows you to um, pick your target configuration, pick the script, and then optionally add an archive message um, to be stored if there was another script in the target configuration that needs to be replaced, and then copy it over to that. Oh, yeah, I'll have to do one. Okay. Um, and that, that'll make that a lot easier for you before you had to export and import and then, or copy and paste. So, all right, let me stop sharing and give it back to you, Phil. Um, Jackson, it looks like we've lost Phil. Not sure why, okay. but I'm not seeing him on the. <laughs> okay. Oh, here he is. Okay. Yes, I'll make him presenter. Hey, Phil, are you with us? Can you hear me, Jackson? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, the joys of computers. I got kicked. I uh, I got kicked out. So I am back here. Apologies, everyone. Um, I yeah, it uh, I got kicked out. So let's get to. All right, so we went through, you talked about your new and improves. Um, we have a couple minutes left for some questions, it looks like. And let me get to, to the questions. All right. Um, we had some questions about resources. Chris, you said you often just Google things. Uh, I know python.org is out there. We also have some, a number of things in the documentation. What, uh, what else is kind of your go-to places for Python information? Well, after I Google, um, I often, there's several places, several sites that uh, will typically come up with possible answers. To be honest, one of my favorites, favorites is a place called Stack Overflow. <clears throat> I found a lot of the good information on Stack Overflow. There's other places as well, but that's probably one of my go-tos. If I see five different choices in my list and one is Stack Overflow, that's probably where I'll go first. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, the other thing is, of course, if it's gain seeker specific help file, I've always got, I'll, I always have to plug the help file. I think the help file is great. Um, I use, I use it all the time. So. That's agreed. I've definitely got that pinned to my start menu. So some further questions on the debugger. Chris, you kind of stepped us through how to go through and, and how to see the code actually kind of operating. But in the event you actually have a crash or I, I guess a, an unknown error, uh, it, are there any other tips from either of you on how you go back and locate where those things are? Um. Well, the breakpoints are a really great help. And as I said, if you put all your or most of your code into a, a single script, it becomes easier to navigate through that and see and add breakpoints because you can only have one script being selected at a time. And so th there's only one script that you can actually insert the breakpoints in um, at a time. At least I haven't found another way. So that's another advantage to having. Uh, you know, using a single script for, say, your pre, post, and on-chain scripts, 
and then using the test ID to execute the appropriate code at the appropriate time is because it allows you to, to easily step through all of that code with the breakpoints and whatnot uh, to try and find the sources of your error. Okay. Jackson, you have anything to add to what Chris said there? Uh, I think Chris, Chris did a great job of summing it up. All right. Uh, we that's have a question. Since it was his, it, that's high phrase since he's the one I got the idea from. <laughs> All right, uh, we're having a question about when 9.4 might be available. As I recall, we're looking at uh, fallish, right? Yes, I believe I believe that's correct. I think, boy, October, September, October, yeah. Okay. October is what we're aiming for. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, you showed a script. Can you call a script within another script? Yes, you can. There is a, uh, a script to call one script from another, which is another very nice function to uh, make you make increased use of, you know, reuse of code. So you don't have to write the same code over and over again in multiple places. Um, that's the misc.execute command, correct, Jackson? Yes. Yeah, I believe that's correct. Okay. And Jackson, you you are you're the speed demon when you're on here. What what other what keyboard do you have some keyboard shortcuts or things like that that uh, <laughs> yeah. you you use a lot? Yes, definitely. Um, ones I use really frequently would be using Alt and the up or down key to move um, lines of code up and down. Um, <clears throat> that one's really helpful. Also, F9 to toggle breakpoints on and off. Um, of course, we have like typical your typical cut copy paste. Um, using pressing F8 to step to the next line of code while debugging, and Escape to stop running a script while debugging. Um, oh, and using Control Shift and three to comment lines is also something I've found really helpful. Um, and probably my most used. Oh, and of course Control F to find. Um, Surprisingly right. powerful. Yeah, it's it's always amazing when you find out some of those little shortcuts. You're like, how did I how did I do without those? All right, fantastic. Well, we have come to the end of our time and we have run over. I'm not surprised that that happened. Uh, a lot of great content in here, and I think it's something we can uh, even look at for in the fall for some more of our tech tips live. Uh, I know most all the you attendees I have, I, I got the attendee list and I have your emails. So if there's some things we may send some follow ups on this. Uh, watch our website. Uh, we'll be posting here in the next few weeks what uh, what our topics will be starting in August. And again, if you would have a suggestion. Send them to me. I'd be happy to consider those as we look at what we'll do. So Phil at Hertzer.com. I'd uh, be happy to do that. And thank you so much for joining us. And we'll have the recording up here in, uh, in a couple days. So enjoy the rest of your summer, folks. And we will talk to you all in August.